royalty has always known the power of the royal portrait. It may be the case that most cameras never lie, but as Prince Giles and the future Princess Sue, we're hoping this one can be persuaded to do just that. Cambridge Jones has photographed the Queen, but his greatest challenge is yet to come. Hello. Hi. Hi there. Well, I think what I'm really after today is to work out what you want. And, what, and I, I mean, just by way of sort of taking you through the history of it all, I mean, what you have to bear in mind is that photography made a strange transition from paintings of Gainsborough and Reynolds and stuff through to the ability to do stuff in an instant. But somewhere in the middle like that, you'd have had to stand there for minutes, literally not moving, yeah. and they'd put neck things around you so that you wouldn't Like a move. harness? Yeah, and sometimes your waist. Well, that's a good thing. I might keep my gutted. The wedding of Edward Prince of Wales and Princess Alexandra was commemorated by William Powell Frith's panoramic painting, which took two years to complete. But, thanks to the new medium of photography, the public didn't have to wait quite that long to see the royal couple. The new technology marked a radical break with the formality of traditional state portraits, allowing the public a more immediate and intimate view of the royals than ever before. But capturing images with the newfangled process was no easy matter. Exposure times were very long, just as sitters' tempers were often very short. OK, so the first thing we need to do is just get the composition correct. The what? The composition. The comp I didn't know you were a composer. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. So, so if you could hold that pose for one Are you going to start painting? In... <laughs> you good to go? I'm now going to start it. Go. After the loss of her beloved Albert in 1861, Queen Victoria withdrew from public view, leaving a vacuum at the heart of national life. Complaints were soon being raised about the absentee widow of Windsor, and people began to grumble about not getting their money's worth from the monarchy. Coming little more than a year after Albert's death, the marriage of Edward and Alexandra provided the perfect opportunity to reignite the public's love affair with the royal family. The pair thus found themselves thrust centre stage. Don't move. Three, two, one. Great, that's lovely. Picture. There was a little bit of movement there. So what I, I just need to get your face into a position that you can hold, which is quite relaxed. And the way the Victorians would do that would be to give you a word that you can then say, dispense with, but leave your mouth in that position. And, and funnily enough, bosom will do it. Bosom. Mm. Bosom. Which, which part well, of not it go bosom. 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 You've got to get to the end of it. Were you allowed to say bosoms in Victorian England? Yes. Well, you're allowed to say anything because you don't see it. But also, yes, exactly. And bosoms, as we all know, must be seen and not heard. No one likes a really loud bosom. OK. One, two, three. Bosom. bosom. Great, hold that. Well done. Different word. If we try, for instance, flip, it ends up with quite a small expression. One, two, three. Flip. flip. Or cabbage, a very large one. Cabbage. That's much better. OK, you're halfway through already. OK, five seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one. Brilliant. Thank you for doing it this way rather than painting. I do, I do think that this, it could catch on. This really? This photography, yeah. The engagement portraits of Prince Albert Edward, later Edward VII, and his photogenic bride, Princess Alexandra of Denmark, quickly became bestsellers. As techniques advanced, a more natural and engaging style of image emerged. Pioneered by photographers such as Cecil Beaton, Patrick Litchfield and Lord Snowden. But the ambition has always remained the same, to offer the public a romantic portrayal of regal majesty and splendour. I mean, it's a shame the Labrador in a field look's already been done, because that would have been my preferred one. This was a major break when they took this, and they were sort of saying, we are real people and we have a real relationship. Do you think they regret that photo? Yes, of course. He's got a short sleeve shirt on, which, which, which comes has. just above the elbow, which is... It's, it's, like, it's like a cricket commentator, isn't it? It's yeah, not straight off so But even the dog is bored. If you can't get a Labrador's interest, you are really stuffed. But this is part of her trying to wig out a bit. So this is her trying to sort of say, look, I can let my hair go loose and stare into his eyes. And... But you're right, it's very flake advert. And I, I'd be quite interested to catch you two 
very naturally as well. Yawning at each other. <laughs> My suggestion is we use the fireplace as the formal thing. And, Excellent. And use you both in front of that. But we've, and we've got to signify that you're engaged, haven't we? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> Good, OK. That's great. OK, look at me. Do you want I to... look like Joan Crawford six months after she died. And then you need to snuggle in you a little like bit. look like the carpenters, the sort of weird... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I like that. That's, see, that's now regal and intimate. A double whammy.